We're going to start with a seated meditation in Bajrasan. So kneeling with the big toes touching, the inner knees touching. Have the backs of the hands on the roots of the thighs with the palms turning up to the sky. The shoulders rolled back and the eyes closed. Begin in this way to observe the breath, the inhalation, the exhalation. In this way, allowing the senses to turn inwards, feeling the inner body. And now bending the elbows, press the palms together firmly in front of the sternum chest. Keep the pressure of the palms even. Reroll the shoulders back and lift the chest, lift the sternum, pressing the shoulder blades, the back ribs in to help lift the sternum more. And keeping the heart lifted, gently now drop the chin down towards the chest. Surrendering in this way the brain, the individual eye consciousness to the heart. And then slowly, gently releasing the hands and gently opening the eyes. And so we begin our practice. So staying right here, just widen your knees apart. Make sure the front waists are long and come forward to Yoga Mudrasan in Bidasan. Notice how my arms are completely straight, the elbows are straight. Be on the fingertips of the hands and lift the palms up. In this way, the arms can have more straightness and they can lift higher up off the floor. And you can really begin to feel the spiral required of the arms to keep the shoulders broad. The inner elbows rolling more and more up to the sky. Shoulders broadening, trapezius muscles moving down the back. Keep walking the fingertips forward, stretching the arms, stretching the trunk, stretching the waist. And then inhaling, looking up coming onto your hands and knees, and from here, pushing yourselves back to our first Adho Mukha Svanasan. Stretch the arms, stretch the legs, lift the heels slightly so the buttock bones can lift higher and higher to the sky. Push the front thighs back, keep the shoulders broad. Spread the fingers, spread the toes, be on the balls of the feet, not the toes. Push the shins back into the calves. Keep stretching the sides of the body, pressing the back ribs in to open the chest to the front thighs, having the sides of the neck even. And now, stepping the right leg forward, finding Parshvottanasan, inhaling, looking up to lengthen the front spine, and then exhaling, walking the fingertips forward, having that length in the arms, which translates to length in the chest, in the trunk, in the waists. Keep the back leg pushing back firmly into the back heel. Keep drawing the front quadricep muscle up the length of the front thigh. And then releasing back to downward dog and changing size, left leg forward, Parshvottanasan. Inhale, look up, lengthen the front spine. And exhale, walking the fingertips forward, finding that length in the arms, length in the trunk. Keep rolling the back thigh in, pushing the back leg back. Drawing the front quadricep muscle up the leg so that the femur bone is solidly inserted into the hip. Press the back ribs in so that more and more the sternum is opening from the back body. And then inhaling, looking up and stepping forward, we're going to find Parangushtasan. So make sure the feet are parallel. With the first two fingers of your hands, hold on to the big toes. Inhale, look up, stretch the front spine. And now exhale and pull yourselves forward. Elbows out to the side so that the muscles of the spine stay broad. Relax the face. Keep lifting the inner arches of the feet, the inner ankles of the feet. The kneecaps up, the quadricep muscles up as you press the chest closer and closer to the front thighs. And now inhale, look up, shoulders broad. And exhale and coming up to standing Finding Tadasan. Shoulders rolled back, clavicles long. Inhale, exhale, place yourselves. Feel already the difference. We're going to be using a wall now, coming to a standing Parigasan, which is a flank stretch. So the right side of the body, facing the wall about an arm's distance away. And now reaching with your right hand, placing the hand on the wall. And then lifting the left arm up and bringing the left arm also to the wall. Make sure your feet are still parallel, the thighs are still charged, the tailbone gently moving forward so you're not overarching the lumbar. And try to turn the bottom shoulder blade forward and the top shoulder blade back as you twist, stretch. And then inhaling up and releasing, turning around to the other side. Left side of the body facing the wall, left hand on the wall. Lift the right arm up and join it. Make the legs strong, push the tailbone forward and begin to turn with an exhalation the bottom shoulder blade forward and the top shoulder blade back. Feeling that rotation, that opening of the chest and that stretching of the side body. And then inhaling back up. And now taking a block, we're going to be coming to some twists using a wall also. So about arm's distance away, the block in this way. Go ahead and sit on your block. Marichasana threes. 
So coming straight into the spine, into the organs. Keep the right knee bent and the left leg extended. I'm doing the mirror image of you. And turn and twist to your right, lifting the left arm up, bending the elbow and finding with the tricep the outside edge of that right thigh. Rub the right thigh and the left arm firmly together. Create a fulcrum point from which to turn, to twist. Press the root of the left thigh down. Press the left heel down. With each inhalation, lengthen the front spine. And with each exhalation, rolling, turning, twisting trapezius muscles down the back. And then exhaling and releasing to change sides. Left knee bent, right leg extended now. Make sure that left foot is facing forward. Turn and twist to the left. Lift the right arm up for length. And then exhale the cross and press the tricep to the outside edge of that left thigh. Press the left thigh back against the tricep. Create that fulcrum point from which to turn to twist more and more. The right leg stays alert. Make sure the front spine still has length, it's not shortening, and use the exhalation to create more and more rotation, shoulders back, trapezius muscles back, chest open. And now releasing. Coming back to the front, Madhi Chasan 3 with a slightly different leg, turning and twisting to the right. So this time, your left armpit can come much closer to the outside edge of that right thigh. Keep rolling the left thigh in, don't let the kneecap roll open, keep the kneecap facing the sky. Turning, twisting, walking the right hand back on the wall. The left eye is following the right eye in the direction of the twist. The left abdomen rolling to the right. And then exhaling and releasing, changing sides. Madhi Chasana 3, with the leg extended straight in front of you on the other side. Leaning forward so that you get your armpit as close as possible to the outside edge of that thigh. Keep the right leg alert, the heel pressing down, the thigh rolling in. Beginning to turn and twist. Make sure you don't push the chin forward or harden the neck in any way. Keep allowing the front face to recede backwards. The right eye is following the left eye. Rotating, turning to the back wall, walking the left hand back if you can. Shoulders back. Press the chest open. And then exhale and release. So moving that block to the side now. Take a strap. We're going to be coming to some handstands and we're going to use the wall so that we can really align the body. The loop of the strap wants to be the length of the inner shoulders. So line that up, make sure it's correct, and then go ahead and thread your arms through the strap so that the strap is just above the elbows. Straighten your arms, test it, make sure the strap is really holding the outer arms in, and then turn around to find your wall. Come in as close as possible, and then straightening the arms, rolling the eyes of the elbows forward, straightening the legs. Begin to feel weight coming to the hands, press evenly into the heels of the hands, spread the fingers, spread the thumbs. Lift the buttocks to the sky. And now lift your right leg nice and high. We're going to hop with the bottom leg, the left leg. So hopping without dropping the right leg at all. Keep that right leg lifted as you gently hop a few times with the bottom leg. Feeling the arms, the shoulders stay broad. And then finally lifting up and finding the wall. Once you've found the wall, line your inner feet up, your inner knees up. The heels rubbing and pressing against the wall. And try to walk the heels higher and higher and higher up the wall. And in this way, you're creating more length in the body, a longer line. Notice if you're favoring one arm over the other. Try to evenly distribute your weight, shoulders broad. And then exhale and release. Coming from here to hanging Uttanasan. So the feet are parallel, the width of the mat. Tuck your head right in between your upper arms. Pull with your fingertips on the elbows to lengthen the trunk. But keep the legs very firm, ascending upwards into the hips. The thigh muscles gripping around the thigh bones. The inner knees lifting to the inner groins. And then exhaling and release. So we're going to be taking our straps again, coming to handstand, lifting with the other leg. So go ahead and put your arms again through the loop. If the loop didn't really support you, tighten the strap a little bit more. Finding your wall, spread your thumbs, your fingers evenly. Begin to feel that weight pushing into the hands as you straighten the legs and walk the feet in. Keep the shoulders broad, lift the left leg. Now you're going to hop with the bottom leg a few times without dropping the left leg at all. So keeping the left leg lifted, hopping, keep the shoulders broad, the face soft, and then finally lifting up and finding the wall. Once you've found the wall, recharge your legs, inner feet touching, push out through the balls of the feet, and try to rub the heels against the wall and climb higher and higher. Push down into the floor in order to ascend up more and more, finding that length, Stretch the waist, stretch the legs, stretch the arms. And then slowly, gently exhaling down. Taking the strap off and coming to sit in Vajrasana. Interlock the fingers behind the back, 
Roll the front shoulder girdle back, clavicles long, head up, cervical spine long. Keep opening the chest more and more. And then exhale and release. Feel that new freedom coming. And now bring the hands again behind the back. Change the interlock of your fingers. And again, roll the front shoulders back. Lift the lower sternum to the top sternum. Find more and more length and broadness being experienced in the lung area and the intercostal muscles and the sternum. And then exhale and release. So now we're going to need a block and a strap coming to Pinchamayurasan. So put your block right up against a wall and then take the strap and put your arms through the strap in the same way, right above the elbows. But this time you're going to be on your forearms and your thumb and index finger will make an L shape around the corner of the block. So the block will be helping the hands to stay aware and even. So go ahead and turn. Place your forearms on the floor, your hands in position. And then begin to straighten the legs. Feel the weight coming to the forearms, the shoulders broad. Now lift your right leg and just gently hopping, trying to use the bottom leg to hop without dropping that top leg. Keep the shoulders broad, the pressure in the forearms firm, and then lifting up all the way, finding Pincha Mayurasana. Keep moving the tailbone forward, the buttocks forward, climbing the heels higher and higher up the wall, walking them up. Press down into the forearms evenly and equally, broaden the shoulders, press the back ribs in, press the dorsal spine forward, the thoracic spine forward, the chest open more and more. And then exhaling and releasing, coming back down. Little neutralizer between sides. Having the feet, the width of the mat, nice and parallel. Dropping the head right down and reaching with your hands for the back of the heels. Give yourselves a good pull. Keep the roots of the thighs firm. Press the back ribs in, shoulders broad. And then exhale and release. So now we're going to lift up to Pinjamayurasan on the other side. So strap back on the arms. Finding the right position. And then go ahead and come into your block to your wall. The thumb on the bottom edge of the brick. And the index fingers rising up the sides. So creating an L shape with your hands. Press the forearms down, straighten the legs, feel the shoulders broad, lifting the left leg nice and high this time and hopping with the right leg nice and gently so that that top leg never dips down below the buttocks or the hips. Keep broadening the shoulders and then lifting back up and finding Pinchamayurasan. Press down into the forearms, make sure the inner wrist is connected to the floor. Roll the upper arms out, keep the shoulders broad. Push down so much into your forearms that you feel your front face lifting away from the floor, moving away from the floor, coming higher and higher. And then exhale and release and coming down. So now we feel a distinct difference in the shoulders and the neck area. Coming forward, placing the forehead on the floor, let's continue with those openings. Finding first child's pose, releasing, relaxing, before bringing the hands behind the back, interlocking the fingers together and stretching the arms up and over to open the shoulders. Keep the roots of the thighs descending, the hips, the groins deepening, the abdomen soft as you lift the arms up and over, up and over. Now turning the palms up to the sky, push up through the heels of the hands. Feel this new stretch along the inner arm. And then exhale and release the hands back down. Exhale, relaxing completely into the ground, evening out the sides of the neck, softening the face before changing sides. So bringing the hands again behind the back, change the interlock of the fingers, lift the arms up and over. Keep trying to roll the front shoulders back so you don't let the front shoulders drop down. Lifting up, lifting up, sides of the neck even. Trapezius muscles moving down the back. And now turn the palms up to the sky and push up through the heels of the hands, rolling the front shoulders back before exhaling and releasing the arms back down to the ground. Even out the sides of the neck and then slowly, gently rolling up, coming onto our hands and knees, crossing the left knee behind the right, sitting between the feet. We're going to be coming to Yoga Mudra Sangha Mukha San 3, a fantastic lower back, hip, sacroiliac opener. And now go ahead and stretch the arms forward, Yoga Mudra San. So again, being on the fingertips and lifting the palm up, so through the palm of the hand, you're sucking earth energy up through the arms, spiraling the arms, the eyes of the elbows turning up to the sky, the shoulders broad. Keep walking the fingertips forward, never being content with where you land, but looking for more length. And now turning and twisting to the right, 
Parshva Yoga Mudra Samingo Mukha Sam 3. Keep stretching the left arm forward so that even in the twist you still have a sense of length. And now coming and turning, twisting to the left. And keep stretching the right arm forward to continue that length in the turningness, the twist to the left. Relax the face, have a smooth and even breath before gently releasing. And coming back up onto your hands and knees, uncrossing the legs changing sides and now the right knee goes behind the left come and sit between the feet if it's too much to sit between the feet you can of course sit on a blanket a block and then exhaling and coming forward yoga mudrasan in gomukasan three fingertips alert pressing down into the floor drawing the earth energy up through the palms into the arms straightening the arms squeezing the skin the outer skin of the elbows into the elbows in order to straighten them completely Feel the shoulders becoming broader, the sides of the waist becoming longer, the hips becoming softer, more open. And now turning and twisting to your right. Keep stretching the left arm forward, gently rotating the left abdomen to the right, softening the face. And then coming up and now turning and twisting to your left. And find now the rotation of the right abdomen to the left trapezius muscles down the back, the face still soft. Feel the hips broadening, releasing, stretching. And then inhaling up and exhaling and releasing. Uncrossing those legs. Feel the difference in the lower back now. Lining up for an Adho Mukha Svanasana. So make sure your thumbs, your fingers are spread, your feet are in line with your hands keeping the knees bent, push yourselves back to downward dog. Keep the knees bent and press the shoulder blades in to open the chest and then begin to straighten the legs, finding Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stretch your arms, stretch your legs, push your front thighs back, lift the buttocks to the sky. And now coming to Chataranga 1 through Chataranga 2 to Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Make sure the hips are close to the hands. Roll the shoulders back, try to bring the head back while lengthening the cervical spine. And then exhale back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lift the buttocks up to the sky again. Stretch the waists. And now stepping the right leg forward, finding a nice wide lunge, turning and twisting gently to the right. Bending that back leg, reaching with your right hand for the foot. Rolling the shoulders back, feeling the front thigh stretching, pressing the hips down, the buttocks down, the hip flexor, the abdomen. And then exhaling and release the back leg. Still staying with those legs, you're going to move onto the back leg, onto the left leg, and stretch your right leg. Then reach with your left hand for the outside edge of that right foot. Pull the femur bone into the hip socket, turning, twisting, stretching the leg, the skin on the back, before gently releasing, coming back to the lunge, and from here, stepping back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Sharpness, lift the buttock bones again, push the front thighs back, stretch the arms, stretch the legs, press the chest open. Chataranga 1, front shoulders lifted, forward to Urva Mukha Svanasana, Press the tailbone down, roll the eyes of the elbows forward, head back, cervical spine long, arch the upper back, lift the chest to the sky. And now exhale back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Push the front thighs back again, lift the buttock bones before stepping the left leg forward and finding a nice wide lunge on this side. Turning and twisting to the left. Feel the stretch coming to the front thighs. Bending the back leg, reaching with the left arm for the outside edge of that ankle. Drawing the foot towards you as you press the buttocks down, stretching the front thigh muscle open, shoulders back, chest open. Let the face be passive, the jaw soft, the tongue relaxed. And then exhale, release, stay on those legs. And now you're going to move to the back leg, the right leg, and you're going to stretch the left leg and reach with your right hand for the outside edge of that left foot. And pull firmly the femur bone into the hip socket as you turn and twist, stretching the back, twisting, breathing, feeling the groin before gently releasing, coming back to your lunge, and from there, stepping back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Make sure your fingers are spread, your thumbs, you're pressing into the heels of the hands, wrapping the muscles around the arm bones, the leg bones, lifting the buttocks to the sky, spreading them apart, feeling the spine lengthen, the chest open. And now from here, coming straight to Urva Mukha Svanasana, and then back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, and then again, Urva Mukha Svanasana, roll the shoulders back, press the buttocks down, chest open. 
and then pressing yourselves back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, push the front thighs back, lift the buttocks to the sky. And again, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, press firmly into the heels of the hands, find that ascendance in the chest, press into the tops of the feet before exhaling back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, re-lift the buttock bones to the sky, stretch the arms. And now stepping the right leg forward again, finding a nice wide lunge and gently turning and twisting to the right, reaching for the back foot and seeing what the thigh brings on the second time. Pushing the buttock bones, the iliacs down, rolling the shoulders back more and more. Stretch and lengthen the front thigh. And then release the back foot, staying with those legs. Come and squat on that back leg, stretching the right leg and reach with your left hand for the outside edge of that right foot. Draw the femur bone into the hip socket, feel the groins opening, turning, twisting, turning, twisting. And then gently releasing, coming back through the lunge, straight in the back leg, hands to the floor, and then step back to Adho Mukha Svanasana. Make sure your feet are aligned with your hands, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, and re-push the buttock bones up to the sky, higher and higher. And now stepping the left leg forward, finding that nice wide lunge, settling the back knee, the back thigh on the floor, turning and twisting to the left. Bending the leg, reaching with the hand for the foot, beginning to draw the foot towards you, feeling the pressingness of the buttocks moving down, stretching, lengthening the front thigh. Sternum open, shoulders back, face relaxed. Before releasing, still staying on that same leg, you're going to turn now to the back leg, squatting on the right foot, the left leg is extended. And now reach with the right hand for the outside edge of the left foot, turning, twisting. So it's a squatting Janu Shishasan. Draw the femur bones strongly into the hip. Keep the groins open as you turn and twist and rotate, finding more freedom, more space. Before gently releasing, coming back through the lunge, refinding the straightness of the back legs. And from here, stepping back to Adumka Shvanasan. Check that the sides of the neck are even, that you're not tensing the throat. Press the shoulder blades more and more into the upper back. Feel the chest opening more and more deeply. Keep that broadness in the shoulders. And now coming down onto your knees, sitting back on your heels and bringing the arms to the side of the body, forehead to the floor. Another round of shoulder openers. So bringing the hands behind the back, interlock the fingers together and lift the arms up to the sky. Keep rolling the front shoulders back, but moving the trapezius muscles down the back, not letting them hunch up towards the ears. And now move your abdomen, your torso to the left and bring your arms over to the right. Keep your forehead on the floor. Keep stretching the arms back, feel the clavicles lengthening. Now bring the arms back up to the middle. Move your torso to the right and bring your arms now over to your left. Try to stretch the arms more and more further away from you, rolling the front shoulders back. Shoulder blades pressing in to open the chest before bringing the arms back to the middle and exhaling, releasing the hands back down to the floor. Feel the difference, re-lengthen the neck, re-soften the face before changing sides, bringing the arms behind you, lifting the arms back up. Again, finding that length, that clearingness of the front chest, of the cervical, keeping the groin of the neck deep before moving the torso to the left and bringing the arms over to the right. Keep the forehead even on the floor. This helps to even out the sides of the neck. Relax the groins, the abdomen as you turn and twist. And now bring the arms to the middle, torso to the right and arms over to the left, stretching, rolling the shoulders back, pressing the back shoulder blades in, opening that chest, bringing more space. Lifting the arms back up and exhaling and releasing the arms down to the floor. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation before slowly, gently rolling up and refinding Vajrasan. We're going to be coming from here to half Suttavidasan. So moving any equipment that's in the way out of the side. And go ahead and sit on your mat with your left leg in Vidasan. Make sure to move the calf back and out to the side to clear the knee and pull the foot in right to the outside edge of your left hip. And now go ahead and come down onto your forearms. Lift your buttocks and move them towards the knees, keeping the lumbar long. Make sure you're still on the front of that left foot. Lift the pubic bone upwards and move the root of the left thigh away from the pubic bone. And then go ahead and lie down completely if the body will allow. Stretch the arms, cross the thumbs together and stretch the arms straight onto the floor behind you. So with the arms stretched behind you, you're going to be able to really have a sensation of length coming to the body. 
Keep pressing the root of the left thigh down, ironing the quadricep muscle to the femur bone, moving the buttocks towards the knees, and lifting the pubic bone over and over again up to the sternum, feeling the broadness come to the breast, to the nipples, to the chests. And now gently coming back up, free the left leg and bring now the right leg to Virasana. Make sure to clear the calf, to roll the calf away, so making space for the back of the knee. And now coming onto your forearms, lift your buttocks, move them towards the knees, making that lengthen the lumbar, which is going to translate into lengthen the abdomen once you lie down. And then lying down, lift the arms, cross the thumbs, and re-stretch the arms behind the back. Press the backs of the hands into the floor. Keep stretching the arms to stretch the waist, to stretch the front spine. Move the buttocks towards the knees the tailbone to the pubic bone and draw the pubic bone up to the sternum, feeling that broadness come to the ribs, to the breasts. Lengthen the clavicles, move the trapezius muscles down the back, clearing the groin of the neck. Soften the cheeks, the tongue, the throat. And then gently releasing and making your way back up and freeing the right leg from Virasana. So moving from here into a little abdominal work, Paripurna Navasa, bringing the fingertips onto the floor behind you. Now lift the feet off the floor, roll the shoulders back and stretch the legs diagonally away from you. Keep trying to lengthen the front spine so the sternum doesn't collapse. Now bend the knees, re-straighten the legs, roll the shoulders back, press the back ribs in, lift the chest up, bend the knees, re-straighten the legs, have that charge in the legs pushing through the balls of the feet, elbows back, Bend the knees and now bring the feet to the floor and stretch the legs straight in front of you. Pull the buttock bones back and out to the side, fingertips to the floor, Dandasan and Pashimutanasan. Feel the length of the front spine, the chest opening. We're going to be coming from here to Padipurna, so leaning back, bending the knees, stretching the legs and stretching the arms. Full pose. Keep charging the legs, ankles are sharp, chest lifted, shoulders back. Keep lifting the sternum, pressing the back ribs in. And then exhaling, refining Dandasan, roll the shoulders back. Press the thighs down, lengthen the front abdomen, and one more time, leaning back, bend the knees, charge the legs, charge the arms, Padipurna Navasan. Inner knees touching, inner feet touching, push through the balls of the feet. Keep stretching the arms, but rolling the shoulders back, clavicles long. And then releasing, refining Dandasan, press the roots of the thighs down, lift the sternum. And again, leaning back, stretch the legs, stretch the arms, Padipurna Navasan. Find that balance, that stability, that evenness between the left and the right, the steadiness, charging the legs, charging the arms before releasing and refinding Dandasan. So now we're going to come and lie down on our back to continue this abdominal work. We're going to do dynamic Jatara Parivartanasanas. So lifting the feet off the floor, inner knees touching, inner feet touching, the arms are stretched. Bring now the knees down to the right, turning and twisting to the left, then bring the legs back up and knees to the left as you twist to the right. Then bring the legs back up, keeping the inner feet touching, the inner knees touching, twist to the right. Inner feet touching, inner knees touching, bring the knees to the right, bring the legs back up. Bring the legs to the left now, twist to the right. Bring the legs back up, keep drawing the navel to the spine. And again, knees to the right, turn and twist to the left, back up. And to the other side, turning and twisting down the length of the right arm. And back up, navel to the spine. Legs to the right, twist to the left. And back up, keep the inner knees touching, inner feet touching as you twist again, turning to the right, and bring the legs back up. And one more time, to the right, turning to the left, legs back up, and now legs to the left, turning to the right. Keep the arms stretched, the backs of the hands pressing down, opening the chest. And again, legs to the right, coming back up, feel the heat coming to the abdomen. And now legs to the left, turning, twisting, shoulders back, coming back up. And then holding the legs here, making sure the inner knees are touching, the inner feet are touching, that parallelness is there. Now stretch the arms behind the head, crossing the thumbs for traction, and stretch your legs straight up to the sky. And now lowering the legs down all the way to 30 degrees, back up, keep the legs charged, back down, and back up, keep the lower back pressing on the floor, keep pushing through the balls of the feet, so pushing out through the feet, keep stretching the arms, lowering the legs, coming back up, squeezing the knees evenly, drawing the navel to the lumbar and then exhaling bending the knees and bringing the feet to the floors keep stretching the arms again for a little bit more length before releasing and now coming to supta parangushtasan one with the left knee bent and the foot on the floor 
draw that right leg towards you, push the quadricep muscle away from you as you draw the leg towards you, deepen the groin of the front leg, and now coming to lateral Supta Parangushtasan, rolling the right abdomen to the left, stretching the left arm to the side, widen the pubic bone, divide it into two, the left pubic bone to the left, the right to the right, turning, twisting shoulders back, back ribs in, and then gently release the leg, feet to the floor, bringing the left leg up to Supta Parangushtasan 1. Once the leg is straight, push the quadricep muscle towards the bone away from you so that the back of the knee and the back of the thigh can broaden more deeply. Drawing the leg towards you, try to deepen the connection of the front thigh into the hip. Chest open, face soft. And now coming to lateral Supta Parangushtasan, bring the leg to the left and roll your left abdomen to your right away from the leg, stretching the right arm to the side. Widen the pubic bone, divide it into two, the left pubic bone to the left, the right pubic bone to the right. Feel the abdomen broadening, widening, turning, gently rotating to the right. Stretch the arms, press the back ribs in. And then bring the leg back up and exhale and release. Now rolling over to the right hand side, coming to sit up for some forward bends. Pashimottanasan will be our first one. I'm going to use a block so that my hands can reach further. So if you're very flexible, you can use a block, two blocks, three blocks, whatever you need. If not, just take hold of your feet. Pulling the buttock bones back and out to the side, then finding the dandasan action, which lifts the front spine. Stretch the arms to Udvahastasan, press the roots of the thighs down, and exhale and come forward. Find the feet or the blocks, whatever it is you're holding. Keep rolling the eyes of the elbows up to the sky so the shoulders stay broad. And when you pull with your hands, if you can bend your elbows, let them bend open to the side so the muscles of the trunk stay broad as well as long. Strongly draw the femur bones into the hip sockets. Keep rolling the thighs very so slightly in towards each other so the buttock bones are widening on the mat underneath you. Lengthen the sides of the trunk more and more and press the back ribs in to open the front chest. And then gently releasing. And now coming to Janu Shishasan, bending the right knee, the heel is close to the groin. Fingertips to the floor, Dandasan action to open the front spine to bring that freedom. Stretch the arms to Urvahastasan, keep the length of the trunk, and exhaling, reaching forward for the left foot, and coming down to Janushishasan. So Janushishasana has a slight rotational aspect to the forward bend motion. Here the right abdomen is rolling to the left as you stretch forward. Pull with your hands firmly to draw the femur bone of the left leg into the hip socket, and stretch forward with your arms to stretch the sides of the trunk as you rotate, turn, and twist to the left. Keep the bent right leg moving backwards, not coming forward into the forward bend motion. And then inhaling, looking up, and gently releasing, changing sides. So the right leg is extended now, the left knee is bent, the heel is close to the groin. Find first that openness of the front spine, rolling the shoulders back and pressing the chest open, feeling that state of freedom, and then with that, stretching the arms up, finding more length, and then turning and twisting towards the right and coming forward to Janu Shishasan. So experiencing the rotational aspect of this forward bend, the left abdomen gently rolling to the right. As you stretch forward, pull firmly with your hands, drawing the right femur bone into the hip socket to make that connection. Keep the back of the right leg stretched. Don't let the bent left knee come forward. Roll it back to the wall behind you. Press the chest open. And then inhaling and gently releasing. So now coming to Upa Vishta Konasan, so making a nice wide V with your legs. And use that block right up against the pubic bone. Pull the buttock bones back and out to the side. Make sure the kneecaps are facing the sky, the legs are stretched. And find Dandasan action with the fingertips on the floor. Find the length of the anterior spine, the shoulders back, the openness, the lifting of the chest. And feel the block lifting the pubic bone up so the pubic bone stays perpendicular to the floor. And now coming forward to Yoga Mudrasan. Don't let the pubic bone drop at all. It will want to tilt forward, the habitual movement. And here in yoga we want to draw the pubic bone up so the organs start to lift up, even though we are coming forward with the trunk. Stretch the arms. Have the inner eyes of the elbows turning up towards the sky so the arms have a spiral rotation, the shoulders are broad. And as the arms stretch, you'll feel the sides of the trunk stretching more. 
Press the roots of the thighs down firmly, the heels down firmly, so the legs are the grounding principle. Deep inhalations, deep exhalations, softening the face, the tongue, evening out the sides of the neck, moving the trapezius muscles down the back and pressing the back body in to open the front body. Inhaling, looking up, slowly making your way up. And now coming to a twisting version of Upavishta Konasan, so I'm the mirror image, you're twisting to the right, holding the outside edge of that foot, having the rotational aspect with the forward redness. Keep the left leg very firm. Don't let it lift up and turn and twist with you. Keep pressing it down so it's anchoring you to twist. Don't let the pubic bone drop either. And then coming back up, we're going to come to the other side. So turning and twisting to your left and reaching for the outside edge of the foot, finding that rotational aspect with the forwardness. Keep charging the legs, pressing the roots of the thighs down, stretching forward as you twist, rolling, turning, rolling, turning. Make sure the right leg is not getting pulled into the twist to the left. And make sure the pubic bone is staying perpendicular to the floor, the block reminding it to lift up so the organs are not hanging down. Press the back ribs in. Feel even here the sternum, the chest, the freedom. Before gently coming back up and releasing. So we're going to come now to Bada Konasan. So bring the feet in, the heels as close as possible to the groin. And find first the Dandasan aspect. Fingertips on the floor behind you, rolling the shoulders back, lengthening the clavicles, bringing that length to the front spine, the openness to the chest. Press down into the hands to find that ascension of the front trunk, head back, cervical long. And now, keeping the length of the front abdomen, exhale the arms forward to Yoga Mudrasan in Badakonasan. So the arms are parallel. Keep walking the fingertips forward, stretching the waist, stretching the trunk, stretching the back, and then try to see how you can create more length from the pubic bone to the belly button, and then from the belly button to the sternum, more length, a longer line, moving the sternum forward, pressing the back ribs in to move the sternum forward, shoulders broad, trapezius muscles moving down the back, and send each exhalation into the hips, into the groins, releasing, softening, widening the pubic bone, and then inhaling up, we're going to turn and twist now to the right. So stretching the left arm forward, using the right hand on the floor to help you to turn and rotate the left abdomen to the right as you stretch forward. And then coming back up and turning and twisting now to the left, stretching the right arm forward, using the left hand on the floor to help you to turn and twist the right abdomen to the left. Keep widening the pubic bone, broadening the hips as you stretch forward and twist before gently releasing, releasing the legs, releasing the hips. And now we're going to come and lie down on our mats, on our backs. Move the buttocks towards the heels, roll the shoulders back, palms open to the sky, stretching the legs now. Reach with your hands for your ankles and widen the feet apart. Then reach with your hands for the outside edges of the feet, having the legs hip distance apart, the feet wide apart. Pull with your hands to draw the femur bones into the hip sockets. The floor will help you to have sensation in the back body, to open the chest from the back body. See if the legs can come more and more parallel to the floor. Keep the broadness of the backs of the knees, the broadness of the backs of the thighs, the quadricep muscles ironing to the femur bones. See if now your toes can come and be on the floor. Make sure the feet are hip distance apart so you have more sensation on the inner legs. Draw the inner knees to the inner groins, the inner groins into the hips. Press the back ribs in, stretch the legs straight. And then exhale and release feet to the floor, arms to the side. Breathe, feel. And now our bodies are ready for a simplified halasan, karnapidasan. So bending the knees, pushing to the hands and lifting the feet back to the floor behind you. The knees can rest on the forehead. Go ahead and support your back with your hands gently so the back body can press forward. And then rolling the shoulders back, see if you can get a little bit deeper into the pose. Bring the knees to the ears, finding Karna Pidasana. Slowly becoming more and more comfortable as the upper back and the neck release more deeply. Keep rolling the shoulders back, keeping the hands on the back to support the back body. Draw the energy of the kneecaps up the length of the front thighs, 
The front thigh is coming into the hip socket, so deepening that front groin connection before stretching the arms, interlocking the fingers and re-rolling the shoulders back. Feel the spiral of the arms and where it originates in the shoulders and from the shoulders right at the center of the chest. So the center of the chest is opening as the shoulders open as the arms spiral and stretch back. Relax completely the face. Draw the eardrums in towards each other. Allow the brow to be smooth and soft. Even smooth breath, relaxing the nervine system. Keep pressing the arms gently down into the earth in order to find that ascendance, the buttocks moving slightly towards the sky, finding length. And now changing the interlock of the fingers and re-roll the shoulders back and tuck the shoulder blades in again, so a deeper penetration. Feeling the spiral of the arms coming from the shoulders from the center chest. Press the back ribs in so that the sternum is moving gently towards the chin. Relax completely the front throat, the face, have a passiveness there. The front thigh is deeply settling into the hip sockets. Buttocks to the sky. And now gently releasing. You're going to make a wide V with your legs and stretch your arms into a wide V so the toes are resting in the palms of the hands or the fingertips. Supta Konasan in Sarvangasan. Keep looking for that ascendance, that liftingness, pushing the buttock bones up to the sky, pushing the thigh muscles to the backs of the thighs, not letting the legs come in any way with gravity, but pushing them up, broadening the backs of the thighs. The trapezius muscles flowing away from the ears, so the sides of the neck are still long. The back ribs are pressing in, the sternum is moving towards the chin, the chin is not moving towards the sternum. Recharge your legs, press into the tips of the toes, push the buttocks to the sky. And then gently releasing, bending the knees, and slowly, gently unrolling down to the ground. Make sure you're lying evenly on the back of the skull. The arms extended to the side, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And now it's just scooting back, stretching the arms out to the side, straightening the legs. We're going to come to a last Jatara Parivatanasana, but using it to release, to relax. So bringing the legs down to the right so that the outside edge of that bottom foot lands in the palm of the right hand and turning and twisting to the left, stretching the left arm. Keep pushing the front thighs away from you, keeping the backs of the legs broad and also creating an action that can bring you more length in the front spine, the abdominal cavity. Turning and rotating the right abdomen to the left. Don't push the chin forward, soften the front throat. Allow the entire front face to recede into the back skull. Press the shoulder blades into the upper back, feeling even here the chest opening, the collarbones long. And now bringing the legs back up, we find that evenness before moving the hips to the right slightly and bringing the legs down to the left. So the outside edge of the bottom foot is being held by the left hand and pull with the left hand to draw the femur bone into the hip socket. Push the front thighs away from you, keeping the backs of the legs broad, getting even broader and longer as you turn and twist to the right. Rolling the left abdomen to the right. Lengthening the clavicles, pressing the shoulder blades in. Check that your front throat is not tense, your jaw is not pushing forwards. Has that passiveness, that coolness, softness in the face. And then bringing the legs back up. We find evenness, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, chest open before bending the knees and gently releasing. And now coming to Dvi Para Supta Pavana Muktasan. Line the inner knees, the inner feet. Press the tailbone gently down towards the floor. Don't let it lift up off the floor. And find instead a depth in the front thighs where the front thighs come into the hip sockets. Imagine a valley that's deepening and softening so the abdomen is becoming softer and resting on the spine. Front shoulders back. Face soft, and then gently releasing. So now for our last and final pose, an inversion while we rest, a kind of Shavasan inversion, called Vipariti Karani, and using the wall. So coming into a wall, and extending your legs up against the wall. If your hamstrings are very tight, don't come all the way in. You want to be able to relax. And then widen the feet hip distance apart, and let the legs roll open. Arms can be diagonally extended to the side, or you can bend the arms and have the forearms parallel to each other by the sides of the head. 
whatever is most comfortable for you and allows you to release and relax completely. Keep letting the limbs relax, the inner knees rolling to the outer knees, the inner ankles rolling to the outer ankles, the front shoulders flowing backwards, resting as much as possible right on the middle of the back skull, the sides of the neck even, the front throat soft, and the entire front face receding backwards, resting, melting. The abdomen resting completely on the spine. The spine resting completely on the earth. Let go, let loose. Find that place of willing surrender. A soft, smooth and even breath that can release and relax the nervous system. Like smooth and gentle healing waves moving through the system. Dissolving all hardness. bringing a life force, a light to areas that are dark, a restoration, just allowing yourselves to melt completely into the earth with gravity, finding the very nature of the liquidness of the body, of the organs, and going with this liquidness becoming this liquid. Let the eyeballs rest completely on the eye sockets. Let the tongue descend more and more towards the throat, turning inwards to a deeper silence. Soft, smooth inhalation. Soft, smooth exhalations. And now slowly, gently, if you feel ready, just begin by wiggling the fingers slightly so that awareness is gently rising, slowly externalizing without losing that inner contact. And then bending the legs gently, the feet sliding down the wall before rolling over to the right-hand side of the body and just lying here in the fetal position a gentle transition from the inner world to the outer world before pushing yourselves back up to sitting. Coming back to Vajrasan. Welcome back to your days. I hope you're feeling fantastic. I hope we practice again together soon. Namaste.